We were two sisters, and I was a maid. We were never really happy, but we managed our little lives with a kind of kindness, or at least a show of it. And then he came. It's not a lily. It's a lotus. It's a pink Egyptian lotus. You shouldn't have picked it. You told me to pick it. After all, I'm only the gardener. My sister will be very cross. It'll make trouble. I'll put it in my room in the shed. She never comes there. I don't care. I want it. Miss Anna, Miss Diadema's waiting for you in the library. back from the bank early. I wonder what I've done. All my life she's terrified me. Perhaps it's because she's so capable and I'm... I'm the fuzzy type. Hello? Hello? I love to keep her waiting. Hello? Where are you? I'm sure you never heard before of a woman running a bank. After our father died, she couldn't wait to take over. And do you know the terrible thing? She does it very well. Didn't you hear me? We have a caller in the library. I don't think my sister will require you any further. You know who got in there? A detective. I wonder who's done anything wrong. Billy. Come on, break it up. Why? Because you're bored with me? Because you've only been here a month and already you're bored with me? Ah! Now, Miss Anna, you must admit you did hire the boy without a word of reference. And that's a dangerous thing to do. I don't care. He's my gardener, and I intend to keep him as long as he likes to stay. Would you be interested that all last winter he was operating a yacht for a wealthy woman in Florida? And what happened? She was found floating with her wrist cut. He was cleared. I must point that out. Now tell her about the professor's wife. Two years ago at the University of Wisconsin, there was a very beautiful young professor's wife, wealthy in her own right. She developed an insane crush on the boy, and was found dead in a bathtub. Under very strange circumstances. Would you please excuse me? I find this discussion pointless. Miss Anna, don't you think your sister is right to demand a reference? I have all the reference I need. His eyes. Anna, you're absolutely infuriating and stupid. Daddy was running away from something I could tell. That he was living with a sorrow out of the past, I could tell. And that he was good and kind and gentle, I could tell. And so I hired him. And so I shall keep him. In spite of your bullying and your detectives and your bugaboo. Well, please, don't start drinking sherry again. It's very weak of you. Anna, you know what happened. Anna, tell Lieutenant Wittig what you pay your gardener. $50 a week and keep? 
Is that all? What do you mean? I was thinking of two of your checks that came into the bank, each for $500, and each made out to this boy, two weeks apart. Anna, what have you to say? Nothing. her to a special clinic outside of Evanston. They said that as long as she wasn't a danger to herself or anyone else. But that's just it. She is a danger. Here she owns half your father's estate. Look at the way she throws her money around. Why, she'll ruin Oh, it. it's not that so much. It's her safety. I mean, with that boy around. <laughs> She wants me to fire you. Are you going to? Never. Here, have some sherry. I took it for you. Don't forget we have a date tonight. Oh, I know. Be sure and bring what you promised. Yes, but I'll be late, I'm afraid. Doesn't matter. She's taken to watching me. Mm. She sits in the dark in the library to make sure that I don't go down towards the pool. Well then, Anna, wait till she dozes off. That's the first time you've ever called me Anna. Anna? Anna! Why does everything wonderful and terrible come tumbling in on us at once? I guess it's the law of opposites. Same with people's capacities. Greater your capacity for joy, greater for sorrow. Greater for life, and greater for death. Trying to get more money out of you? No. How did he get the first thousand? Did he tell you a hard luck story? He doesn't talk about himself. No? Then how did you happen to know he needed money? Because he's a poet. And poets always need money and protection. They're not like bankers. Oh, I had no idea he was a poet. Oh, but he is. He may even be a great poet. And then just think, I have discovered him. I'm going to give my life to help him, to be his patroness, his, his deep and ever-loving friend. Oh, really, darling? Can't you see that he's just playing the same game with you that he played with all the others? Why do you have to take over? When I get even a little tiny corner of life for myself, why do you take over? Oh, but I'm not, sweetie, I assure you. I'm only trying to keep you from some horrible thing. No, you're not, Anna. You're driving me straight into it. Anna, you know what I told you I would do if you keep this up. And I can, too. I've talked it over with the judge. What? Send me away? Oh, Anna, please dismiss this boy. Send him away. Send him packing tonight, before either of us make some terrible mistake. Anna, will you? No. No matter what horrible thing happens, I won't send him away. Through the dishes at 8 30 tonight. Couldn't we go and sit by the pool late like we used to? I got work. What work? Listen, Billy. This diadem has been on the phone all evening talking to lawyers and the chief of police and everybody. Yeah, what's up? So, how would you like it if I fixed it so you could stay here as long as you like? I'd like it. Billy, I got something on that old woman. I know a secret that nobody in this town knows. Yeah, what's that? There's a phony book in the library, and inside it are rubies and diamonds and some old love letters. Huh. 
What's your idea, little blackmail? Just answer my question. If I fix it so you can stay, will you be nice to me like you used to? How do I promise that? Everything depends. I gotta have you back! Now listen, Marshmallow, nobody owns me. I think I told you once before, nobody ever owns me or I bust them in the face and run. Is that why you're here, Billy? Because you're running away from some woman you busted in the face? All right, grab you, hear me? Grab oh. before I butt you! You're so pretty when you're mad! Hello? Judge Fairfax, have I called you too late? Well, you know the problem that I came in to see you about and you drew up the papers. I'm terribly afraid I'm going to have to sign them. Yes. Yes, I found a lovely retreat for her, just outside of Chicago. Splendid doctors. Oh, the gardener's been taken care of. Lieutenant Bittig was here. He'll pick him up in the morning. Well, actually, as I look back on it, I don't believe she was ever really sound. Yes. Yes. I'll sign them now and put them in the mail in the morning. Thank you. Goodbye. And now, the second act of House of Masks, starring Geraldine Fitzgerald with William Redfield. what I promised. These are all the things that I've read and loved in my life and copied out. I've got something for you, too. Are you going to read it? I guess I was thinking about tomorrow night when I wrote this. Why tomorrow night? I'll be on the road. What? I have to shove off before daylight. Oh, no. I think maybe I'll call this one for the road. Now I lay me down alone, lay me down to rest. Earth, you be my mother now, wind, you be her breast. Clouds, you be my blanket now, night, you be my home. Now I lay me down to rest, lay me down alone. Billy, did you kill a woman in Wisconsin? What? Did you kill a woman on a yacht in Florida? What do you think? No. Two women I knew well died. And it's true, I'm running. What did they die of? There was a beautiful girl in Wisconsin. She wasn't Hollywood beautiful, she was beautiful inside, beautiful like you. We both taught freshman English, and we were in love. We were beyond belief in love, and she died. Her heart just stopped, that's all, from too much happiness. Most people wouldn't believe that, but I believe it. I believe that the human heart, if it's a big heart, got to be a big heart and stand only so much joy or so much sorrow that it simply suffocates, stops. And as for Florida, let's skip it. She was a rich, grabby dame and when she couldn't grab me, she slit her wrists and she should have. You didn't say a word about this. 
I like it very much. That's good. I like you to like it. Billy, did you hear shots about an hour ago? What? Did you? Did I what? Did you hear shots? Yes, did you? Yes. Did you go to investigate them? Did you? No. Don't you think you should? No. I think there'll be enough investigators barging in here and bungling around. But don't you want to know who got killed and who killed? I do know. Know what? I know you killed your sister. How do you know that? I'm a poet. Where'd you get the gun? My father's revolver. Just think, all these years it's been in the drawer. Give it to me. What for? I need it. Why? To teach a lesson. I don't understand. Anna, do you trust me? You better get some rest now, Anna. Before the world comes screaming in on you. Here we go. Here come the sirens and the lawyers and the undertakers and a million righteous goons trampling down the lawn, gaping for blood. But my book, I never read you this. May I keep it? Yes. Yes, of course you can. I wrote it for you, for you to go to sleep by tonight. Here she comes. Goodbye. And don't worry. Remember when it's time, there'll be a knock. killed her because she wouldn't show me, and if you won't show me, I'll kill you too. I'll show you. And will you swear not to call the cops till daylight? Swear. And will you swear not to wake up Miss Anna? Swear. That's why I'm doing it this way, Marshmallow. I wouldn't want her disturbed. All right. Let's start. Now, Miss Anna, don't you get upset again? Oh, please, why can't I explain? Well, you did. Look, see, I wrote down every word you said. Yes, but you didn't believe me. Well, of course we do, don't we, boys? Mm -hmm. You think he did it? You think he killed her for the jewels and ran away? Well, the jewels are gone, and he's gone. Until we find the jewels, he's guilty. Oh, but he couldn't have done it. Now, look, you stay right here by these pretty lilies. And before long, remember Judge Fairfax, your father's old friend? Well, before long, he's coming over and help you take charge. 
Okay? Okay. Now look, honey, could you sit up there on that table? That's a girl. Before morning, your picture's gonna be all over Chicago. No kidding. Yeah. Hey, would you unbutton the top button of your blouse? And sit up nice and straight. Hey, now tell me. Was this guy really a lunatic? He sure was. You should have seen the way he come at me. Smile now. Oh, there's no doubt he did it. We got the gun, his fingerprints all over it. Fingerprints all over the desk. And the jewel's gone. Sure. Sure, and why did he run? What I mean is, an innocent person doesn't run, you know that. You know, she's crazy as a coot. Mm -hmm. telling us she killed her sister. Yeah. Well, the papers are right here. Looks like she was signing them when she got shot. Yeah, so I mean, the intention was clear. Well, we'll let the judge figure a way to work it out when he comes. to the end of another story of suspense brought to you by Autolite. Before we say goodnight, I'd just like to remind you drivers that two types of seal beam headlights have been used on all cars made since 1940. Both are completely sealed so you can't get inside. Now the question is, what type of seal beam unit do you want for your car when a replacement is needed? After all, sometimes stones or other objects break a headlight, like I'm about to do with this hammer, and it's up to you to decide what type you want. One that will burn out the minute the lens gets cracked or broken, like this one on the right, right here. Or the metal back Autolite bullseye seal beam, for the extra safety protection that it continues to burn even after the lens is cracked or broken. Yes, that's right, friends. You want to be sure you get the Autolite bullseye seal beam, because remember, from bumper to headlight, you're always right with Autolite. The web spins more mystery on the CBS Television Network. <laughs> <laughs>